Radical. Yo, I'm bonafide. That's where I call it. Coffee. Birds, I'm still here. Hostage. Hostage. Still here. Hell hostage. <laughs> nah, man, grammatical. <laughs> Very groundbreaking for us. It was like, I think that was our first official approach at trying to make a record that was a little more industry accepted as far as the whole industry from concept photos to everything you know um we actually had a concept a whole kind of spy type concept for the photo shoot that we did we shot with some black leather we shot at the airport for that whole record i mean we just really wanted to i think that was our that was our way of saying hey we're coming in under the radar without saying it you know literally you know by just with the concept of the way the photo shoot was we wanted that to set the tone for how we were coming music and um i think we definitely did that especially with breakout songs like all fall down you know uh, which was a huge huge single for us and uh one of our first like uh, scripted videos all yeah fall down. Like, we did videos before but this one actually had like a plan, a plot to it, you know. We actually did a storyline and everything for it before we shot it. Yep. The other ones we would just turn on the camera and ran around doing crazy clothes. Yeah, that was the concept. And um, Herb was the main, he was the main star in that. He was Mr. Blake, Blake Knight. <laughs> he was He's that. Blake Knight in the video, the, the up and coming rapper. Platinum artist. Blake. Platinum artist I'm getting sure. his getting his plaque. And, did um, you get shot in that? No, nah, he didn't get shot. I think he just kind of. Well, you know, death. you know, it was like the, the, touch, of, the okay. touch of death, like the video. Split a lot of people, up. a lot of people don't know that the flamenco dancer in the video, she was the angel of death. I think that was probably one of the best videos we ever shot too. Aside from here we go, like all fall down was the truth. You know, it, I mean, a lot of it, it was our some it was our ideas mixed with the director Eric mixed with his ideas and it, well, it came out pretty good so definitely proud of that joke. hey what are, what are the standout songs to you besides struggling struggling oh, jason eskridge was singing the hook on that yeah struggling jason eskridge our boy jason eskridge uh, still doing his thing to this day that's what's up that's what's up rustic soul creation my man ken chesson ken chesson was in it yeah. yeah, Teriyaki Carter. That's my cousin, my cousin, my blood cousin. Uh, you know what? The biggest sound evolution from Factors to Grammatical was that's when we moved away from two inch reel and started using ADAT. Yeah. Like studio wise, technology wise, things changed. So we wasn't doing two inch reels no more. It was like ADAT, you know, moving into more digital sounds and things like that. So, I mean, that was a big jump, I mean, for us. Um, it a lot cheaper too because that two inch real tape was expensive. So, you know, it definitely made it more budget friendly for, uh, you know, for us to not have to deal with that when it came to editing and mixing and stuff like that. Yeah, he was in the studio guy. I was, I was the one that was mainly I said, this thing like on, the studio, this thing the studio on. guy. He wasn't on, the off, studio. On. So, so they, VCR tapes. <laughs> right, they did look like VCR tapes. Look at these big VCR tapes in here. <laughs> Let me see what else. I mean, I, there was a was Mirage on that. That record was more musical too. Like we had a lot of more singing. We on did that. have more singing hooks on there too. Yeah, a lot of more singing hooks, more instrumentation. Like Factors was raw. Factors was all about the beats and rhymes. And we were singing on that. Yeah. We sang stuff on Factors. This is before Drake. <laughs> And uh, before Drake and Ja Rule, this was back. What would I be without you? So, oh, uh, but yeah, that was uh, <laughs> uh, actually I think I, I would say grammatical was a songwriting growth too, because we we kind of started writing songs that were a little more uh, broader, like more mainstream, without purposely doing it, but we were doing it anyway. To writing songs that were more uh, acceptable to everyone, that everybody would get into. It. As far as um, you know, that some stuff that could be played on radio, but that's not what we was going for. But it just kind of happened that way. Definitely. I forgot I was on the record. So that tell you how much. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think because probably around that that era is when. Uh, man, I think it 
think I started doing a little bit more solo stuff. So yeah, like you did. Schedules you did. started taking us in different spots. So um, you actually start getting the shows and a lot yeah. of shows and stuff. Um, so he was he was less involved as far as yeah. our album making experience. Like before, we was always in the studio together, no matter yeah. who was before. You know, so once his career started, it was like we had to just had to get you know still work together, but at the same time focus on our own careers. By the time grammatical rolled around, I could quit at Kroger and then you know go out and do the actual show. Oh, he was still at. <laughs> we got like a thousand uh, Let's go. <laughs> We don't remember nothing, y'all. Right, we should have did this at an old folks' home, man, like sitting in the playing checkers, like, you remember that? Oh, I don't remember that. Alzheimer's on the left side. When we did grammatical, everything changed. We changed to more serious, like actual concept of photo shoot. Tech technology wise, in the studio, everything changed because it went from analog to digital. We started dressing more consistent. Yeah, we did. Oh, we was bright joking. <laughs> yeah, we did. We, we started dressing more, we had you know, goggles and stylish, and stylish. Walked on stage with kickballs, and we was all over the place. Yeah, we were more a little more stylish during that time. Uh, I think that's when we actually started gaining ground in the industry too, as a group to take serious. Like, okay, these guys are gonna be around, you know, especially after the success of All Fall Down and Kevin and Lady and And we had did it so much for fun. That's when we started taking a career series. Yeah, we started getting more business minded. We literally was just doing the music. I mean, we loved doing it, but you know, around the third album, the way we started to understand the inner working for the business and what we should be getting, you know, how to, how to, how to do uh, two personnel, get shows together, hiring people. You know, we got more than that. Yeah, handling budgets. Knowing what to do with a record budget, how to you know how to really plot it out, how to do the record, really produce it, how to actually produce and not just come in and record, but just produce the record from doing the tracks to, to everything. So we grew up a lot. Yeah, I'm grammatical uh, revolution. Yeah, my son, my son was a shorty at the time, real small. And I put him on the record. He was just starting to talk. Did like the little man intro. Got my son to the studio, put him on the mic. I'm like, hey, you in, you going to work. Right. And we just kind of started kicking it off with that because we're very family, man. Like, we were, we, we all like ate together. Like I said, when we went on the road, we like, we, we was together. together. Yeah. We were together on and off the road, no yeah. matter what. So, when somebody got married, she married us. Hey, right. And she knew it. We made sure she knew it. So, I mean, that's, that's the way that goes. And then, I mean, songs like, you know, uh, I'm going to show them, you know what I'm saying? That was more down south. We start kind of revealing more of uh, our roots. We started uh, on grammatical because I'm going to show them was more down south. We actually, it was dope because we got the opportunity. That was a Titans, Tennessee Titans theme song for them. Like, they home, home games. They first came to Nashville. They first came. They picked that song to be, like, their theme. So, uh, I mean, that was, which was dope to do that. And, uh... Even songs like uh, Sound Check, I mean, which, which was banging. I loved it. Well, I, and that was actually one of my, um, that was one of my tracks, one of the songs that I produced that I got a chance to produce. Um, we should try to bring a little more, like I say, down south flavor into what we were doing because we was from the south. We never, we never made apologies for it or any of that. And, um, and so we definitely felt like we needed more presence in, and, and down south presence was growing in the whole industry anyway, so it was definitely a perfect time to start introducing more of our roots into uh, bringing that into the records, you know. So uh, regardless of how the label felt or how the industry would accept it, we just did, you know. We just went with it. Uh, another joint, like, um, which was an underground song at first was Antagonist. But on this one, we all, on Romantic, we did the return of the antagonist because we did antagonist on an unreleased uh, mixtape that we did, uh, which was called Mental Unreleased. And those were like songs that, if anybody out there has a Mental Unreleased copy, then you are very fortunate because we didn't actually mass produce that. We only made a certain limited amount of those and that's where you got songs like fragmentation like that was during that 
the mindset that we were in during that time. And, and, and that's where fragmentation came from. Um, that and, and like I say, we did the return of the antagonist. The actual antagonist is on that mixtape that we did, which was an unreleased uh, record that we just did actually in our kitchen. Cause we all still live, that's when we live together. And we did it in our kitchen uh, in like a day or two or something like that. And just knocked that mug out and just did it. Just to be kind of, just to stay up and to be doing it. Oh, it's kind of like when Bill Cosby did Leonard Part 6. <laughs> you didn't remember what happened to the other five films? Right. There was actually an uh, antagonist before it returned to the antagonist. Exactly. But nobody would know that, though. So and good. You call a, a movie Leonard. First of all, <laughs> who remembers Leonard? <laughs> all right, yo, Coffee Jones. Going to fire to Ron Carter. Burns sitting in. Sitting in. We got grits, factors of the seven, the whole conglomerate right yeah, here. Yeah. Wrapping up the radical revolution. Thank y'all for tuning in. Yeah. Make sure you hit us up. You can hit me up on Twitter at Teron Carter 22V. And definitely hit my man. I am at Coffee. I am Coffee Jones. Yeah. And I know at, my man. At Yeah, you can hit me. I know verbs, both Twitter and Instagram. I'm gonna get a bunch of pictures of my kids. But uh nonetheless, those are the handles. Yeah, stay in touch with us, especially on the official, at official grits. At official grits yeah. on Facebook. Hit us up with, with any questions or anything like that that you guys want to know about the records, about us, whatever, whatever. Just stay in touch, stay in contact. You Don't ask me nothing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing. <laughs> and just remember, the legend never dies. My life be like. Wow. Yeah. My life be yeah. like. Yeah.